We are the friends that refuse to let you settle anywhere. We want you to take whatever expectations you have for your business and your life and expand them further than you've allowed yourself to before. We're talking style, connection, purpose, and securing all the bags. You can sit with us, but we're going to have you step your game up too. I'm Robert. I'm Rachel. And I'm Susan. Welcome Welcome to to the most. Welcome to the most podcast where we are uncovering how to live your the most life. I'm Robert Hartwell. (laughs) I'm Rachel Rogers. I'm Susan Hyatt. I just feel like news anchors when we do that. (laughs) Yes. It reminds me of that that, um, movie Anchorman and I'm just living for it. (laughs) Wait, I'm Will Ferrell. (laughs) I'm Rachel Rogers and this is the nightly news. (laughs) You know what I'm living for? The hair changes in this episode. I mean, truly. I mean. Yes, we've got Whitney Houston. <laughs> who are you? Oh, who are you? Hands with the money. I don't know. Who am I? You're giving me yeah. Reese. You're giving me Reese. <laughs> Reese Witherspoon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like this is like a really trendy, fabulous Lux bride hair. <laughs> And She's I'm here expensive. for it. She's but, expensive. But yeah. you know, I if it's bride hair, I am having a 30-year vow renewal. Yes, she is. If you is. haven't heard. <laughs> and on that note, I would like to welcome everyone to this episode, which is on friendship. And something that I don't know if you've heard on our other episodes, but recently Rachel turned 40, (laughs) Susan's turning 50, and she's also having her 30th vow renewal, which is wedding, uh, just another wedding. (laughs) Like something you should know, actually, is there were plans (laughs) that they were going to do the vow renewal overseas, and then it became stateside for like family stuff, and then there was a plan last week where (laughs) it was just going to be... Her and her husband, the Silver Fox Scott. Oh, yeah, so she thought she was uninviting us. Yeah. <laughs> we, said, yeah. we were like, no, please Ma'am. inform Scott that we will absolutely be there. <laughs> <laughs> please let him know right away that there will be no private vow renewal. That shit is not happening. Okay. Hello? Hi, Hi Scott. I had to go to the bedroom and I was like, okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> thing between the two of us <laughs> and so I had to sell my husband on the new plan and you know what we call that we call that friendship that is Hello? that's or what we call bullying. it or bullying you know what we gonna do? No, no, no. it's a fine line it's okay <laughs> what we gonna do is we gonna show up Correct. invited right. uninvited we Just gonna invited. be there <laughs> are popping. Uh, listen, and we already knew. Then she was telling us about this fabulous dress that she had made. And I'm like, this dress clearly yeah. needs an audience. I mean, <laughs> I mean we all see this dress. You're going to put on this fabulous dress yes. only for your husband? Come on. No. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I also feel like we need, we need coordinating fabric. Yes, we you do. Know what I mean? Yes. I will send you the fabric samples. Yes. and the. Des- I mean, y'all are going to fall out. That's the this whole is, point. We want to be gagged and slayed. Okay. Yes, this, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> so, so mm, back to friendship. Back to friendship. <laughs> what we're talking about today is squad. Yes. You know, and true, real friendship. And I think as all of us came out of the pandemic, a lot of us lost a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us, like, realized, I think, what are the meaningful relationships? And yep. I, whenever we're at the most or at ROI or any of our events, people are always like, oh, y'all really show up for each other. Yes. You know? Like we're real actual friends because you yeah. know there's a lot of fake internet friends, right? There's a lot of fake internet Y'all friends. know there's a lot of fake yeah. internet friends, right? Right. <laughs> right. And I know other people, we had the best yeah. time coming together to support yeah. Rachel at ROI. Yeah. Yes. Yes. such a great Oh like my we God! Love to see each other mm-hmm. shine and slay. Yes. yes. But wait, before we talk about our, can we what? talk more about these fake internet friends? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, there are people who pretend to be friends online, and I think they make money together or something as to why they're pretending. But then when you get close up or you find out behind the scenes, they're yeah. not actually friends. Yeah. Why do I find this so hilarious? <laughs> I'm just like, who are you faking for? Listen, I am not going to be nobody's fake friend. Like, either that's we're so real not. friends or we just we're be not. friends. Exactly. Like, yeah. I don't want to do that. And that's that's one of the things about making friends, right? Like, you might be like, oh, I want a friendship like 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 the three of us had. And... Truly, you should look for that. And there's some strategies that we're going to share about how to look for that. But the reality is it has to happen organically. Like, it yeah. has to be truly that you feel connected to somebody. You're having fun with them. You want to connect with them again. It can't be like, I'd like to make money off of you or with you or whatever. I have a business. For, mm-hmm. Trust me, mm-hmm. we and everybody else can smell that a mile away. Yeah. And it feels gross. And we run. We run yeah. the other way. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, that ain't gonna work to make your friends. If you want to have friends, you have to like. <laughs> you like my running motion? It's the running. It's like, who's running like this? Listen, choose friends that are funny. Okay, <laughs> that can entertain you. Correct. Okay, that's my choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But truly, like you have to find those friends that you can have an actual connection with. And if you put yourself in different rooms, you will find those people eventually. You're gonna find people that if you go to one event and just talk talking to different people, you're gonna find somebody. Yeah that you vibe with and then that can become your real friend but you can't manufacture friendships like i mean i guess you can for the internet (laughs) but if you want real friends that you can call on when times are tough or when you need help or advice or a shoulder to cry on or whatever it is or just want to celebrate something like that is requires authenticity and that doesn't come from fake friends crap totally because when like we've talked about in some of the other episodes when things happen, when the shit hits the fan, Baby. A, a fake friend is not going to be there for a, a vo- an early morning or a late night Vox to give you advice or pick you up off the floor. They're just not going to have the energy, nor will they have the kind of advice you want to listen to. Correct. Mm-hmm. And you know what else fake friends don't do is get on planes. Okay. Because we get on planes for each other all the time, whether yeah. it's like. You know, I asked these two, I'm like, we were doing ROI, the Millionaire Summit, which is our big event in Puerto Rico. And these were the first people I asked to speak because I want them to share their genius with my audience. And they were like, duh. (laughs) Like, when do you need me to be there? Whatever. I'm putting it on my calendar and I will be there, you know? Um, And that's. I should also say, speaking of putting up, you just did the face again. Listen, continuously, when I, when I speak up in these podcasts, Rachel's always like, oh, shit. Is she about to, <laughs> I am not. I think I'm just say, like, I'm play just, back. Play the tape back. <laughs> Look at her eyeballs every time. I'm just excited to hear what you're going to say <laughs> next. Truly. <laughs> She's like, oh, <laughs> That's because she drops bombs. I'm like she bracing does. myself for the bomb she's about to drop. Yeah, oh, that's a good friend. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what were we saying? You were saying something about scheduling. Oh, right. At the top of the year, I think it was January 1st, we all got on Zoom together and blocked off our g for not just business things that were important. It was the personal things, your kids' birthdays, mm-hmm. the vow renewal. When, mm-hmm. did, when are you going on vacation? When are we going on vacation? So it was, we went ahead and pre-blocked our entire year yep. of squad date. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so that we could be there and get on planes and support one another. I think that's rare. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Because we're like, uh-uh, we can't do that retreat that day yeah. because it's Susan's 50th birthday. Yeah. And we obviously cannot miss it. Okay? And now we're like, 50? <laughs> oh, my God. Did what anyone loved, tell you that Susan was turning 50? <laughs> what I loved most about that day, it one, we thought it was going to be two hours. It went five or six hours. I mean, it was basically an eight-hour planning <laughs> Like, like a group VIP day. Yeah, but the first hour, we didn't talk one thing about our businesses. No. Like, it really was, like, exactly. What you doing for your birthday this yeah. year, right? Like, where mm-hmm. we, where do you want us to go? Wherever yeah. you want us to go, we will be there, right? Yeah. Like, just blocking it in so that we can all be there for those important moments throughout yeah. the year. And it's also, going back to ROI, it's so exciting seeing, I felt like, like a stage dad. You know, <laughs> you but literally like, were a stage But like dad. sitting in the audience, just being like, okay, stick the landing. Ah, she stuck the landing. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. just like, and to also see all of the people that you help, mm. you know, and always hearing the transformation stories, but then seeing those people in real life 
love on you and get excited about all of the other things that you're creating. It's just, uh, it also just feels damn good to show up. Yes. You know? Exactly. Let me tell you something. These two have been getting on planes for me for, like, since, since the beginning. Mm-hmm. Truly. Like, remember when I did cake and coaching? I remember. You flew from Indiana to New York to be there for a two-hour event, y'all, or three hours, whatever it was. I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to cake and coaching. Like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> only thing better would have been French fries. <laughs> Coaching. Listen, French fries and champagne, you know, that's all she needs in life. Coaching sounds really fun. French fries and coaching, that's a new offer. That's my new offer. I, know. <laughs> I will say, I that's not her new offer. We're not going to let her do that. <laughs> I will serve you fries on a retreat, though. Yes, and you'll be very delighted about it. <laughs> but the point is, right, here's the thing, though. Like, you don't want to, here's what would happen. If, if they were constantly rearranging their schedules, showing up to speak at my events, like, supporting me, in my work, and then I wasn't doing the same for them, we would not be friends anymore, right? Like, you want those friendships. You're not counting it up. Like, you're not like, well, I came to these things, so let me check off how many things have you done for me. It's definitely not like that. But you know when someone's there for you and when you can rely on them and when you can't. And so you want to make sure that you are a reliable friend. How are you showing up in your friendships and making sure that you're being that reliable friend for those friends that, you know, really matter to you. And I'll, and let's be honest, there's different levels of friendship, right? Like, not everybody is going to be your closest friends that yeah. you talk to every day. And that's okay, right? Like, not everybody needs to, it doesn't need to be that level of relationship. And I don't think we can actually carry on that level of relationship with hundreds of people. Unless, right. of course, you're Robert Hartwell. <laughs> What happens, what happens every Don't time you're on the phone with Robert Hartwell and he's walking around New York City? Let me tell you something. Or anywhere. Literally anywhere. You could be I, with him, <laughs> on the phone with him, listening to a Vox from him. And this man will be telling you something and then be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. <laughs> exactly. And it's his yoga instructor from when he was 17. <laughs> And he hasn't seen them in years. And oh my God, how's your mother doing? How's your sister doing? We need to know. We need to know. I, this man has been in Rome, okay? Like yes. complete other countries. Literally, when we went to Italy, right? When we had that, like we had a couple day add on uh-huh. to Susan's retreat. We were in Italy at a fabulous hotel laying out by the pool. And sure enough, this man runs into somebody he knows from oh New God, York. And I'm like, right. how is this possible in Lake Como? <laughs> right. So if you try to do something sneaky or hide, don't hang out with <laughs> Exactly. Because okay. literally. The streets is watching. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but also what I love about friendship too is when you are asking someone to be the best version of themselves, even when it's uncomfortable. He did the pause. (laughs) Fucking thank you. The pregnant pause from season one is now here in season two. You know what? You You know what? (laughs) I tried to hold it together. I just want you all to know that friendship shouldn't be violent. It shouldn't feel violent. It should feel more. Friendship with them <laughs> feels very hot, okay? It feels very steamy and violent. But what I was trying to say... I'm so sorry. This is why we listen to you on 4X. <laughs> you know you got those people, you got a 4X though. Scott will come in the room and be like, who is that? I'm like, it's Robert, but he's on 4X. He's like... <laughs> I have a lot of things to say. We love you. I have a lot of things to say. But also, too, he takes his time to say it. I take my time. And you know what? I need to learn from that. Yeah. Take up more space. Okay? (laughs) (laughs) See, I'm not the only shady one. (laughs) Listen, I'm just giving him shade because he was giving me shade about this top before we start rolling. Listen, that top is fabulous. Listen. Okay. (laughs) Let's bring it back. (laughs) How How can they make friends? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, you were talking. Go ahead. <laughs> That's a real Y'all, question. send help. Okay. <laughs> Truly, thoughts, I have prayers, help. blessings, and tidings. Okay. Wait, what were you going to say, though? <laughs> he don't know. No, that I do know what I was going to say. Okay. 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 I know. That's all right. <laughs> we're the backup singers. Okay, <laughs> so here's what I was going to say. And it was actually something nice about you and then you started acting <laughs> acting up okay sorry. Acting i'm sorry up. no it's okay 
But what I was going to say is what I really love about our friendship is... <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I can't do no. it. Oh, can't shit. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is there was a moment, and this is real. <laughs> I hate everyone. <laughs> There's a moment. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna hold it together. <laughs> this is why we don't get nothing done when we hang out. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> no, no, finish your next one. I'm going to get now. I'm dying to know. My nipples are at attention. To that. <laughs> oh dear God. Um, what I was gonna say is also when you have friends that see that you can be better. Mm-hmm. You know, I think yes. it's one thing to show up for people. I think it's another thing to like support each other, but I think it's another thing to also look at each other and say, hey, like, I need more. Mm -hmm. Or this is like what I expect from you. And I think to me... It's called standards. It's called standards, but it's also called care, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's called authenticity. Like, you know, so last year, 2022, when we were telling you all about in the High Low episode... Like, one of the lows for me was, like, really trying to figure out how to juggle, like, the TV show with the home renovation, with burning down one business and opening another, like, opening a new company. And in the midst of that, I've always been a yes person. But what I realized is, like, I can't keep saying yes because at the end, when it was then time to get on the plane or time to go to the event... I just didn't have the bandwidth, right? Because I had a filming day or this or that. Yes. And you came to New York to come see me. Yes. And I remember we were like sitting in the spa together and we both just like cried mm-hmm. because we're like, hey, this is what I need. This is what you need. And there yes. was this moment where like for a couple of months we were hurting, mm-hmm. you know, like, and we didn't really have the language yes. to say it yet. We were feeling it, but didn't know exactly like how to say it to each other. And in that moment, it was so beautiful because I'm like, as uncomfortable as this is right now, it's like bringing us back together in such a real way that also was like a huge wake up call for me around, oh wow, in what other ways am I like having the best intention to say, yeah, you know, having Mm -hmm. the best intention. But then at the end, it's like, oh God, something comes up. I got to, you know, and it has really shifted my year. Like 2023 is feeling like so much more intentional, so much more grounded. And it wouldn't be happening. Like if I didn't have a friend that not only shows up, but also calls you in and says, hey, like, I know you can be better in this area. Yes. And like, I think that's the kind of friends that I hope for everyone that's for listening and watching to mm-hmm. have because I don't just want to cheer squad. Like, we will come exactly. and cheer each other on right. all but day, every day. Each other but like, themselves. bitch, call me in and tell me when I can be my better best self. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Or when, like, you know, when you're scared about something or when you're dialing it in or where you're saying no to your dreams, like, we call each other out mm-hmm. on that. And we're like, uh-uh, no. Mm-mm. We're not going to allow that. Yeah. <laughs> right? Just like, you know, when I try to do a video and I try not to put on lipstick and this one's like, can we get a little lip? And I'm like, I'm going to beat you. Say it again. <laughs> say, put on the lip again. <laughs> I will say, though. And but, I- but he's right. He's right. Because then I put on the lip and I'm like, okay, I feel cute now. Now let's do it. <laughs> have a confession. Yeah. This is the first time that I've worn strip lashes. Usually I'll do little individuals and my eyes are really, it feels heavy. (laughs) And so I just want to apologize for the years of being like, wear your lashes. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right. Remember the heel situation? Yes. Oh, first of all. First of all, have y'all heard this story? Because you absolutely must. (laughs) You must hear this story. Listen. This one over here, always with where's your lip, where's your heels, mm-hmm. where's, where's your, your eyeliner, yeah, where's your, oh, your nails look broke. <laughs> Listen, this man, this friend 
kept evidence of a time where Susan's toes didn't look right. <laughs> <laughs> COVID. <laughs> Get to the salon. Yeah. This man takes photographic evidence and occasionally texts it to us. Never forget. Anyway, but the, my point in this story. Kim COVID toes. Listen, <laughs> shut up. Y'all, Kim toes was like. It's the only time. <laughs> the only time. Okay, the only time. They were. The right. only You're time. Right. You're right. Listen, along those lines, he wears a, basically a kitten heel. Oh, okay. Exactly. He wears. <laughs> I mean, a bow with platform, a black platform yeah. heel. Not high. Okay, this is his first like heeled shoe. Okay. And and what was he doing hobbling <laughs> after? We had to hear. Listen, this man ordered from Amazon a rubber sole, and then went to the cobbler and had them put it on because he was too afraid to walk around in the kinds of shoes that he's always telling us put your heels on. Yeah. Oh, oh, you you learned that heels is hard to walk in. Is that what yeah. happened? <laughs> Oh, you scared you all slip in your heels? Now his, heels. now his eyelids are heavy. <laughs> Today. Listen. I'm healed. I'm you. better. I apologize. Listen. I'll okay. be better. You know, that takes vulnerability to admit. When you, <laughs> you know. We applaud you for that. I would we going to put him in a corset next and be like, Listen, learn about a brassiere. Uh-huh. Okay? Learn about our lives. Yeah. All right? <laughs> for you comment. Exactly. <laughs> but. To have salty friends like these, <laughs> something that you can do. Everyone is so scared to come to the most. <laughs> no, the most is full of. You want to put yourself in rooms of like-minded people. You want to put yourself yes. in rooms yeah. where you know you're going to be inspired, and put yourself in rooms where they're. You know, I live in a small town in Indiana, and I had to get on planes and put myself in rooms where I knew I was going to meet people mm-hmm. who had traveled the world or had done bigger things. And I have since found lots of local people to hang out with. But it took me putting myself in rooms mm-hmm. of entrepreneurs or of people creating brands and people doing big things in the world uh, for me to find my closest friends. Yeah. Exactly. Literally, that's how you find friends, as you mm-hmm. go to places where... You're going to find fellow entrepreneurs or fellow people who are building similar things, doing similar personal development work, like putting themselves on stages, right? Um, Just whatever it is that you're trying to do, right? Find people, like go to those events, put yourself out there. And yes, even if you're an introvert, even if you have some social anxiety, be willing to like, you know, try it sometimes, Um, especially places that you feel safe going, right? And then, you know introduce yourself to people like practice or meet people online first and then you have somebody to connect with when you get in the room because trust me I'm not I I am extroverted but I'm pretty quiet when it comes to strangers I don't just go and be like I'm Rachel Rogers who are you you know that's actually my husband my husband will talk to all the strangers and then he'd be trying to bring me into the conversation and I'm like sir no. That's okay. not how it does that. Like, <laughs> like, we're not making any new friends today. Right? He's always like, Rachel, come on over here. I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> and I start running the other way. He loves to talk to strangers, you know? Like, that's his thing. But that is not my thing. And I, I still feel that way sometimes when I go into a room and I don't know anybody. So I get it. Um, but I know that you have to do those some of those challenging things yeah. to find your people, right? And if you find people online that you really like, set time to go spend time with them. Like, go visit them where they are. Go to one of their events. Yes. Like, show up at each other's events, right? Like, buy a ticket and go. That's what y'all did. That's how yeah. we became friends. Literally. Right. You show up to each other's events, leave a podcast review. Um, I had somebody recently send me an email, and if she's listening or watching this, she'll know exactly who she is. I posted something really vulnerable about um, learning some hard lessons about folks who really only wanted to be around when they thought they could make money off of me or mm-hmm. write coattails or like they weren't genuine friends. Right. And I got my feelings hurt. And she sent me the kindest message. She was like, I just want you to know, I don't want anything from you ever. I just think you're dope. And if, if I get the opportunity to get to know you better, I would love to. And I signed up for this and this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like, oh, a real person. Yes, you know, exactly. A genuine person. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you want a friend, be a friend, right? Like show up as a friend, go find your people, go leave your house for your people, put your clothes on for your people, right? Like 
friendship doesn't happen over the internet. It can, but it can also happen in person, you know, prioritize seeing those people. Because I had one year where I woke up and I was like, I actually spend zero time with my favorite people in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, like I had that realization one time and I had little kids and I had a business and like that's all I was doing was working and being at home with my family. And I'm like, all of the, like my, the friends that I would like to spend time with, the people that I admire, I don't ever see them or spend any time with them. And I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna change that. So I just decided that I was gonna put a concerted effort into making sure I saw them and where are we gonna hang out? When are we gonna hang out this year? And that kind of thing. And we continue to do that. And now it feels so much easier, like it's always happening. And we're always like, okay, after this, when's the next time we see each other? Oh, we get to see each other again on this date because we have this penciled in, you know? So we always know yeah. we have something to look forward to where we're gonna spend time together and show up for each other continuously. So I think, you know, making friends is really about leaving the house, yeah. getting out there and then just putting yourself out there a little bit and meeting people and waiting for that person that shows up that is your person where you really bond and connect. And I feel like it's so easy. It's like, you know, when you met, sometimes it's just you're in line for food and you're laughing with someone and you're like, let's sit together. And then the next thing you know, you're besties and going to Aspen together or whatever. I mean, I've never been to Aspen. I don't know why that came well, Where did Aspen? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of where friends might go. It. It's, where, it's where friends might go. I a thing you that. might do. <laughs> so you all are probably watching, listening right now, and you're like, I crave that. Like, yes. I want more of that. That is the room that the most is. Because it's not your typical business conference, right? Mm -mm. It's about visibility. It's about branding. It's about partnerships. It's about the most visible you. And not everybody wants that. Yes, right? Like it's not true. everyone wants to grow their personal brand. So if you're listening and you're saying, it's my time to do that. I know that I'm hiding. I know that it is time to step into that. Step into that with us at the most in LA, April mm -hmm. 27th through the 29th. You already know that tickets are going where? Bye bye. And you need to be where? <laughs> They're there. Okay. So come, come. Welcome to the most.com. We can't wait to see you. And um, come, 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 come be with your salty friends. <laughs> That was that was exceptional. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that. I do one last thing I do want to say too is at the most my sister came, right? And my sister last year at the most, my sister came and she didn't know anybody in the room, right? Except me. Literally. And she left with new friends, yeah. right? It's like yeah. it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. If you come into this room, trust me, you are going to vibe and connect with different people. Mm -hmm. And y'all gonna be going to dinner and kikiing and, and getting coffees together. And exchanging numbers and hanging out after that. Like, that literally is what this event is for. So that's one of the things that's going to come out of it. I'm excited for you. Yay!